Hello, hello, this is Moni Cogard with the Shades of Grey podcast because everything in real estate is not always black and white. We are here with Century Communities and we are with our lovely representative named Kyle. Kyle. Hi, Kyle. How, How are you, you doing? doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. good. Thank you for asking. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. How long have you been with the community? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So I've been in the community now for probably about two months, mm -hmm. but I've been with the organization since February. Okay. How do you like it? I actually like it a lot. This community is geared primarily toward first-time home buyers and a ton of investors. Awesome. Uh, so we get a quite a bit of traffic. Okay. Quite a bit of traffic. Yeah. Awesome. Well, our first segment, we were just kind of getting to talk about the um, new construction process as far as if an unrepresented buyer comes in, how that's handled. Today I would like to talk about um, situations. Okay. So a lot of times uh, if somebody comes in, they, they're not very knowledgeable, they don't know the process, they, they don't know the steps. How do you handle negotiations if a buyer um, is there any leg room to negotiate at that point? Because I know a lot of times you have things set already in place yeah. within the home. So are inventory homes negotiable? That's a great question. And yes, the answer is yes. Uh, everything is going to be based on what the buyer needs. Okay. So if the buyer needs to have, for instance, our homes come with the move-in package, okay. the refrigerator, washer and dryer, if the buyer feels that they need that, then we will negotiate that into the deal. Okay. Uh, but if a buyer does not need that, we'll negotiate it out of the deal and see if we can use that money as a discount. Awesome. Uh, and that's just one of the few examples, but there's, there's so many different ways you can actually negotiate on new construction. Mm -hmm. uh, but just trying to zone in or lower the price sometimes could be uh, catastrophic for the community. Right. Yeah. Now, why do you say that? Because comps. Oh, yes. So we have, lovely comps. We have comps. <laughs> uh, most home buyers, especially first time home buyers, they don't realize that they have neighbors mm -hmm. and their neighbors bought at a certain price and they want to maintain those values in the community. People don't take that into consideration a lot of times when they're trying to get the lowest price. Okay. Everybody just wants the lowest price. And I, I mean, it's just nature, so mm -hmm. I get it. Uh, but when it comes to understanding what's happening in the community, comps are very, very acceptable yes. when we're trying to get these numbers squared away. And that, I'm glad that you said that because for those that don't know what comps are, comparables, basically when a realtor runs comps for their client, we are using that to determine the sales price if it is in alignment with what the market is saying the prices are worth in that house. So if you are a buyer and you come in by yourself, you don't have a realtor, run the comps if you know how to do that to see if what they are providing matches up with what is sold in the area. Is that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because I, I don't know how that would work with a new construction since it's a new neighborhood. There's no necessarily you know, sold when homes When there's inside. nothing on the ground, we got to go to communities that are nearby. Nearby, okay. That's, yeah, that's the so only way it can be So that kind of increase the mileage radius. Yeah. All Absolutely. right, well, awesome. Okay, so what about um, any type of, if there's, what about questions if there is, uh, like, inspections or when you get to the inspection process or you have issues with the buyer, I'm sorry, not the buyer, but with the builder, mm -hmm. what, how do you handle that? Like say for example, they pick an inventory home, um, it's time to do the inspections and everything is not where it needs to be. How do y'all handle that? And that's, in that so situation? we don't, we don't really get to that point. Oh. Um, and that's just because there's certain processes in place that keep that from happening. Okay. Uh, most of the very knowledgeable salespeople are going to stay on top of the construction process and be corresponding with the buyer at least once a week, mm -hmm. letting them know what's happening in the home, what the next steps are. Uh, and the fact that we're seeing the home so often for a buyer to get to a point where there's an inspection mm -hmm. and there's things popping up that we're unaware of, that's just unacceptable. That shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So that's not something that we've had occur. 
since oh, I've been here. Awesome. I'll say that. So is there actually an inspection process that, that they go through where they do the blue tape, yes. they walk through, make yes. sure everything is where it needs to be? Uh, there's two construction walks. Mm -hmm. uh, the intro construction walk, we just, again, we just kind of meet construction, sign off on some different things. And on that first walk, they will allow you to start doing some of the blue tape, especially mm -hmm. on items that construction may also notice mm -hmm. where they say, hey, they kind of rushed this. We'll put some blue tape right there and they'll start it for the buyers and the okay. buyers can come in, do the process. And then on the second walk, they just confirm everything, make sure they sign off on everything that they have put blue tape on mm -hmm. and get them ready for closing. So everything's been ready prior to closing, no issues after closing? Yeah, no, we don't awesome. do it. If there, are an issue, if there is an issue after closing, warranty. Okay. And we have an in-house warranty department. And how long is your warranty? It's a one-year workmanship, it's a two-year behind the walls, mm -hmm. and a 10-year structural. Okay, so. awesome. So guys, yeah, you man. already have a warranty, so that is absolutely amazing. Yes. Now, tell me a little bit about what would you say some of the differences or the advantages and disadvantages are of a, a, a buyer that comes in with a realtor and one that comes without a realtor. Oh, man. Okay, so, <laughs> goodness, that is loaded. Okay, so... With a realtor, buyers with realtors generally have a little more education. Mm -hmm. uh, buyers without realtors generally try to educate themselves, and there's nothing wrong with that, but they have not gone through the processes and procedures that you guys have gone through to become agents. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't know everything that they think they should know. Mm -hmm. And part of that is just that we don't know what we don't know. We really have no idea what we don't know. We're all just kind of grabbing at different straws. Uh, but the buyers that do have realtors, mm -hmm. they're the most educated. Uh, they're able to get the deals done quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, and they generally tend to be the happier customers. Mm -hmm. You hear that, guys? This is why you need to have a realtor when you come to these yeah. lovely communities. Nothing against the builder rep no. they're wonderful no. and they're very helpful but it is definitely an advantage to have a realtor with you Agreed. so in that in in a situation when you say that the the buyer only knows what they know how do you help them or facilitate the deal because they don't know they don't know the contract they don't know what's in there how do they know what might be missing or things that they should pay attention or ask for Whereas if they had a realtor, they, the realtor would be doing that. So as a builder, there are certain things I'm going to point out and things I'm not going to point out. Mm -hmm. The things I'm not going to point out generally are the things that they don't ask and things that I don't, that I don't deem very important. Okay. Uh, for instance, if somebody, said, if, some, if somebody walks in the house and they're like, hey, what, what kind of feature do you have? I'll point out the features that I think are important based on the information they share with me. But I'm not going to go straight to a tankless water heater mm -hmm. and say, hey, look, there's that, right. there's that tankless water right. heater. Are you ready to write a contract? <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, everything, everything is uh, very circumstantial. But uh, yeah, we, we, I take the reins. I give them the information that they need. I build rapport, which is extremely helpful mm -hmm. in getting them to understand and to trust. Okay. Understanding and trusting is a big part of this side for me. Okay. I have no idea what it's like being an agent. I've right. never been an agent. But being on this side, just... Ooh, it's they, a lot of work. They got to have that <laughs> trust. Yes. But there's, there's been times where I've had conversations or I've been a part of a deal where... The realtor has an amazing amount of control over that buyer, so much so that the realtor decides mm -hmm. where that buyer is buying a house. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the way that you want to work it from both sides, mm -hmm. as a realtor or even you know, as a builder. You want to be able to have that control to help guide your buyer the best way possible because you think that buyer was concerned that mm -hmm. if, if they did decide not to buy one of my homes, do you think they were worried about it? No. They had an agent that was telling them exactly what they wanted to hear, mm -hmm. when they wanted to hear it. That's, that's what matters. Okay. Yeah. So from some of the other surrounding communities, what stands out about yours? Why should, why should me Great as a question. realtor bring my client here besides the wonderful perks that y'all have? Yeah. So, okay. So that's 
to me, that's that. It feels almost like a laundry list of mm -hmm. items. Uh, location is the biggest thing. Okay. Uh, when you look at a lot of other builders that are around similar price points to mine, they're either further out, mm -hmm. or you know, further into Katy, further down this way. I mean, they're just not as close to 99 or close to the highway as we okay. are. Okay. Uh, and then size, mm -hmm. we're going to be 500 homes once we're done. My home. We have about a year and a half to go before we're completed. Okay. We have a ton of properties that we're selling to first-time buyers and investors, where a lot of these other communities out there are not just doing first-time home buyers and investors. Some are not doing investors at all, mm -hmm. which... I feel like in that sense, if you haven't, because investors are going to be flipping and yeah. selling and renting, you're going to have people moving in and out. I just think that, in my opinion, I don't know if I would want to live in a community that has investors buying because I feel like that may kind of either delay the process with the move-in um, or completing, you know, the phases or, you know, you're going to have people co constantly moving in and out because you have renters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Does yeah. that, do you feel like the, for a new community that brings down the value? So I would say, depending on the area, yes. Okay. Uh, in this particular area, the reason I don't feel that way is because I've seen quite a bit of investors from all over the country. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people seem very geared toward Katie. Right. Um, and then when they're seeing these price points, some of these buyers, I'm sorry, for instance, I have a buyer closes tomorrow. He's from New York. Mm -hmm. He's buying the home as a personal home, but turning it into an investment property. Okay. And probably about 70% of my clients are doing that. Wow. These are first time home buyers moving down here, trying to get into investing, trying to get into the rental game and bringing in that mailbox money. Mm -hmm. And so they're buying these homes, financing them for about a year, refinancing it, and then throwing a renter into the home. Wow. Uh, and then doing a cash out refinance, taking that money and going and putting it down on another house. Right. That's what we're seeing. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, that, even with that, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, because yes, you do have some people like yourself who, even myself, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose to just live in a community with a ton of renters. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there's a goal in mind, and if all of these people have similar goals, mm -hmm. then the whole dynamics of the community changes. Right. It's not just one person or two people trying to rent. It's a ton of investors in this community mm -hmm. and they know what this community was set up for and they are making it happen. Okay. Now, there are other communities we're in that don't do that at all, but this particular community does allow it. Nice. Yeah. So do you, um, do you refer any realtors, uh, inspectors, attorneys, appraisers, when you have a client that comes in unrepresented, mm -hmm. you do? All the time. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would like to be on that list. <laughs> all, all the time. So yeah, I would I, like to be on that I list. I have so many people who, uh, you know, I've, I've been able to build and develop relationships with, mm -hmm. where when I have somebody come in, yeah, I, half the time I don't even text them or call them. I just say, hey, this is the person you need to talk to. I know wow. this person very, very well. Just tell them that you came from me. You'll be taken care of. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, well, well, good to know. I will be hearing from you <laughs> very shortly. <laughs> well, great. That is pretty much all the questions that I have. Do you want to let the audience know the price points of your home? Yes. So our homes right now start in the mid twos okay. right around 265 269 nice. okay uh, and right now just up to under 400 at the moment we do have a new section that will be opening up here probably within the next three months mm -hmm. where we'll be going up to right around 450 okay some bigger homes um, but yeah, that's it. And like I said, we're... And you have about 500 more homes. We have... We're halfway to 500. Oh, halfway to 500. We're okay, halfway so... halfway to 500. All, we, we still got plenty of opportunity yeah. to buy a home in Katy, Texas under $300,000. That is correct. Dollars. That is an opportunity for you to come in. They have their own lender. If you um, have a lender or if you don't have a lender, I can help you. I will... I'm sure I'll be doing more business now that I know that they send unrepresented 
uh, buyers to realtors um, and we are great friends now so thank you for uh, being a part of the show Absolutely. thank you for the information Absolutely. it's been great and how can someone reach you you know, oh. do you want to share your phone yeah. number, your email, your absolutely? Should so we follow you on Instagram? I am on Instagram at Kyle Jones underscore Century Communities, mm -hmm. and my mobile—that's the best way to get in contact with me—is mobile. Okay. My direct line is seven one three three four eight nine nine one one. Awesome. Email? You want to email that is email Kyle dot Jones at centurycommunities.com. Okay. Yes. Well, Kyle Jones, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you, Thank you for watching Shades of Grey podcast. And I'm Monique Hogard. You can reach me at 832-578-4021. My email address is tmoniquehogard at gmail.com. And I'm on Facebook at Moni Monique and Instagram making moves with underscore Monique. That was a lot to say, but that's who I am. So thank you guys. It's been a pleasure and we will see you. I will talk about on episode three what uh, some of the benefits are with working with a realtor. So thank you guys. Stay tuned.